you are getting very sleepy. I will count down from five. When I reach the number one, you will be alert and ready to learn. Five, four, three, almost there, two, one. Welcome to group six lecturette on states of consciousness. We will be taking a look at a tool used for altering consciousness, hypnosis. Hypnosis is an altered state of consciousness or a psychological state of altered attention and expectation in which the individual is usually receptive to suggestions. When someone is put under hypnosis, the hypnotist will suggest positive changes to apply to their life. If the subject awakens from their hypnotic state and actually goes on to apply the suggestions to their everyday life, it is called post-hypnotic suggestion. Contrary to popular belief, hypnosis does not in fact put you in a sleep state. When a hypnosis subject's brain is monitored by an EEG, a type of diagnostic test, it has been found that the brain waves resembled those of a person in a relaxed, awakened state. Do you think you would be easily hypnotized? The best candidates for hypnosis are the people that can ignore distractions and immerse themselves into an imaginative state, a place where you can picture your favorite song or movie, very similar to what they call your happy place. How much a person's response is changed by hypnosis is called hypnotizability. Some origins of hypnosis can be traced back to a time of sorcery and magic. Ancient Egyptian priests would practice hypnosis in what they called sleep temples, where subjects would be put into a trance-like state as a treatment for illness. The scientific source of hypnosis is first found in the late 18th century when German physician Franz Mesmer used hypnosis, or what we now call mesmerization, to treat his patients. In the mid-19th century, English physician James Braid, also known as the father of hypnosis, studied the practice, eventually coining the terms hypnosis and hypnotism, named after the Greek god of sleep, Hypnos. Braid's discoveries not only established his reputation within the scientific community, but also established hypnosis as a subject for scientific research. He was successful in persuading the medical establishment that hypnosis was a valid clinical practice. To be successful in their practices, hypnotists have to guide the conscious of their patients. There are four steps to this process. Step one, the hypnotist minimizes distractions and makes the subject comfortable. Step two, the subject is told to concentrate on one specific thing, like an imagined scene or a ticking watch. Step three, the hypnotist informs the subject what to expect when they become hypnotized, often described as a floating sensation or deep relaxation. Step four, the subject's conscious is guided by the hypnotist to the desired outcomes by suggestion, such as their prompting of their eyelids getting heavy. They will feel like the hypnotist caused this reaction and they will then be open to further suggestion. Over time, hypnosis has been gradually decertified as a scientific practice by many contemporary theorists. Their argument lies with the question of whether hypnosis is a divided state of consciousness or a learned behavior. Ernest Hilgard, the theorist who created the divided consciousness theory, suggested that hypnosis occurs when the consciousness is split into two parts. One part of the consciousness, 
follows the hypnotist's commands, and the other, known as the hidden observer, stays in contact with reality during hypnosis. Some psychologists are skeptical that hypnosis is really an altered state of mind, being under the belief that hypnosis is simply a person acting out in a way they believe a hypnotized person would. Hypnosis is still very mysterious to many, and much is still to be learned. As more and more studies are done, scientists, doctors, and psychologists are learning about the benefits of this altered state of consciousness, and how it can be applied to patients and people in their everyday lives. Researchers that study the brain can use imaging to reveal the actual effects of hypnosis. It can be used in a medical setting as an anesthetic for reducing the experience of pain and reducing a person's pain threshold. Studies have shown that the hypnotized patients felt less pain than their counterparts who were not under hypnosis. Though the effects of hypnosis are still heavily debated, many practitioners still use the method to treat a variety of ailments, such as alcoholism and smoking, reduced anxiety, relieving depression and reversing suicidal tendencies, handling post-traumatic stress disorder, and treating insomnia. Check out the link provided in our comments to experience hypnosis for yourself. Five, four, three, two, one.